Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Angela Bell, and I'm hosting this session on learning how to solve cryptic crosswords. Um, first of all, I've been asked to say a few words about myself and um, my volunteering experience with NHS responders. So um, I live in Ipswich in Suffolk and uh, normally when I'm working, I work at my local university um, helping students who've got disabilities and um, specific learning difficulties such as dyslexia. And I've been very fortunate that this is a, a job that I've been able to continue with from home uh, using phone and Zoom. Uh, over the last year, so I've been able to continue working. At the same time, I've been doing some volunteering work, particularly over the last three months, and I've been a vaccination centre steward um, at a local pharmacy, Aqua Pharmacy, which is in Ipswich. And my role is to help manage the queue of people as they arrive, um, to make sure that everybody's lined up in the right order to get vaccinated quickly so you don't have to, to wait too long, especially when, when the weather's cold or wet, making sure that they've got the right paperwork um, and um, just having a chat with them as well before they go in to be vaccinated. And, and it just helps the, the people inside the pharmacy staff and the vaccinators who are doing such a great job um, to, to do everything more efficiently without any hiccups. Um, so I've really enjoyed seeing people coming along uh, to get their vaccines. The first session I did, a lot of the people were, were over 85, some 90. Um, and over the weeks that the people have got younger and younger and now when we go and do a session, um, we're seeing people in their 30s coming along and it's it's been really rewarding to be part of the, the vaccination rollout and doing a bit to help. Um, yeah, so I'm one of the volunteers who's who's taking part in the virtual village hall and um, thanks for joining me this morning. I'm going to be demonstrating um, using an interactive crossword from the Times and uh, just talking through some of the, the clues for you and um, hopefully this is, this is going to work okay um, and, and you'll be able to see and, and, and learn a bit about um, how to solve cryptic crosswords. Okay. So um, I was just going to put something in the comments that might help you as well. I hope this is going to work. I was hoping it would let me cut and paste in. <laughs> Okay. It doesn't doesn't like um like cut and paste. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna bring up the um the crossword and, and hopefully everyone can see that on your screen. Um, so one of the things with, with cryptic crosswords is, is sometimes knowing what sort of clue you're, you're looking at and having an idea of how to make a start. And I thought we might make a start by looking at what we call anagram clues because they are some of the easiest clues to solve. Um, and uh, there are a few of those in, in this crossword. If anyone's not sure what an anagram is, so an example of that um, is the word cart horse, for instance, which I think has nine letters. And if you rearrange the letters, you could get the word orchestra because they've got it's got the same letters, but in a different order. And they're very popular, very common in cryptic crosswords. So rather than starting with one across and, and working through the puzzle in that way. We're going to start off by looking at some, some anagram clues. Um, you might notice at the top that it says, uh, this is a times quick cryptic. So these are slightly easier and quicker puzzles to do. They're quite good if you're new to, to puzzling um, or if you've only got a limited amount of time. And the person who created this puzzle is called Joker and that's a pseudonym. So 
usually um, crossword setters don't use their, their own name, but they'll have a, a pseudonym, a pen name. And the, the pen name of this person is Joker. So I'm hoping that you can all see this. Um, so we've got the puzzle in the center of the screen. And on the right hand side, we can see all the clues. So I can just scroll down. So I'm going to start with the clue that is 10 across. I'm just going to highlight it with my with my mouse. So this clue is to an answer, which is eight letters long. And normally there's a definition. So definition is the word that you're looking for. It's one way into the answer. And the definition is usually either at the beginning or the end of the clue. So the clue is bins leak unfortunately liable to end up underwater. Now, the word unfortunately is what is called an indicator word. It's a word that tells us what to do with the clue. And it tells us that this is an anagram. Okay, so un unfortunately is an in indicator of an anagram. And the, the letters that you're going to be reordering or playing with are bins leak. So we need to reorder those letters into a word that means liable to end up underwater. So I don't know whether anyone's got any ideas. If I go back to the, um, to the chat. Not sure that the chat is working for me. Let's just go back then. Okay. So if we reorder those letters, we get the word sinkable. So we put that in. And that makes a good start. Gives us lots of letters to play with. Okay. So another example of an anagram clue in this puzzle is one of the down clues. So if we just go, go down. So 16 down, hopefully you can see this. Italian dish completely different to Rosti. So this is a, clues are often written to um, to mislead you. Rosti is a, a sort of potato dish. You might think that this um, this clue is, is about cookery, actually. So we're looking for an Italian dish. That is the definition, which is at the beginning of the, um, of the clue. And the indicator telling us that it is an anagram is completely different. So the letters that you're going to be playing with are the letters in the words too rusty. And hopefully you're able to see that if you rearrange the letters of too rusty, you might get my favorite Italian dish or one of my favorite Italian dishes, which is risotto. So let's put in risotto. And we're making a good start. Okay. So we've got another anagram, which is three down. So let's just go back up. And this time now we've got a bit of help because we know that the end of three down is the letter K from Sinkable. So this clue, meat takes working, is five letters. So remember that the, the definition is either going to be the, the first word or the last word. And the word working, again, it's another indicator. So it tells you that you need to work with or rearrange some of the letters in takes and to come up with a word that means the same as meat. So we've got steak, which is an anagram of takes. 
So we're making really good progress with the anagram clues. I think the last one in this category So we have to scroll up and down, uh, is 16, let me find 16, oh well, 16 was risotto wasn't it, so it's 19, so it's the clue that goes across, 19 across, so we need to just scroll up. So the clue is, in the interactive puzzles, the, the clue is always highlighted, which is very helpful. So we've got a clue, one getting fires going so trains will move. Okay, and the answer is eight letters and we've got an S towards it already. So how do we know it's an anagram? Well, we've got the phrase will move at the end. That tells us that we need to move the letters around to make a new word. The words that we're working with are going to be so trains. And the definition, so this is the definition of the word we're looking for, is at the beginning of the clue. And it means someone who gets fires going. Okay. So someone who's not not a very very nice person, someone who likes to make problems or c commit crimes using fire. So the answer for this, once you've rearranged the letters, is going to be arsonist. That's someone who sets fires. Ooh, sorry about that. This sometimes happens with the. Um, with the interactive puzzles that you put a word in and uh, doesn't always go where you want it. Okay, so we've made a really good start on some of the anagram style clues. And, and pretty much in every puzzle, you will find several clues with anagrams in. So it's a really good skill to, to start with that. Okay, we've also got a couple of clues here, which are called double definitions. And I think we could perhaps move on to those next. So double definitions is where the answer, the word you're looking for, has two completely different meanings. So you don't have some, some letters to play with. You, you just have to work out the definitions. So an example of this is 12 across. which is a four letter word. So the clue is sport you might get in butchers. So usually the double definition clues are really short. Sometimes they can be as short as two words. This, this one's a bit longer. It's, I think it's six words long. So you need to think of a word that means sport. And the same word means something that you might find in your local butcher's shop. So I don't know whether, whether anyone's been able to guess what the word is. It's game. So we'll put game in. So game is another word for sport. Game of tennis, for instance. And game is also something that you might get in your butcher's shop if you like buying venison or guinea fowl or those sorts of, of meats. So that's the first double definition clue. And I think we've got another one as well that I spotted. So having a really good vocabulary and, and general knowledge helps with double definition clues as well. So this, this clue right at the bottom, 25 across, um, is a bit tricky. So we'll just scroll up. Okay. So the word we're looking for is an emperor. It's actually a French emperor. And you'll, you'll probably be able to guess the name quite easily. 
But it's also the name of a French coin. Now, I didn't know this when I, I first came across this puzzle. This was, was news to me as well. Um, so the, the most famous French emperor that we know of is Napoleon. And that's also the name of a, of a French coin. So let's put Napoleon in at the bottom. So we're making really good progress. So those are some double definition clues. Um, we also sometimes have what are called hidden clues. And th again, these are quite easy clues to solve once you know that it is a hidden clue, because the word that you're looking for is often inside another word. So if we look at 24 across, we've got another example or an example of a hidden word clue. And the clue is border broken up in United Germany. And the fact that the, the clue has got the word in as part of it should suggest to the solver that it's a, a hidden word clue that you're looking for. And again, remember that the, the definition is going to be normally at the beginning or possibly at the end, but in this case, it's at the beginning. So you're looking for a word that means border. And if you look very carefully at the words United Germany, you should be able to find the four letter word that means border. And I'm going to put that in now in 24. So it's edge, like the border of your lawn, maybe. My lawn needs cutting. I'm just looking out the window at it now. OK, so we've looked at anagram words, anagram clues and double definitions and hidden words. But we've still got a lot of advances to fill in. And some of the other clues are known as charade clues. And a charade clue is a sort of clue with lots of bits and pieces that you put together. OK, and very often they will include abbreviations as well. So we'll have a look at some charade clues as well. Charade clues probably make up the the most clues in a puzzle. So they're very common. So I think we should have a look at maybe two down. So if I click on the clue and then we just need to scroll up. OK. So we've only got the I in this answer, haven't we? It's seven letters long. So the definition, we're going to guess it's at, at, the, at the beginning of the clue. The definition is take a look. And then we've got the word cutter. So we're looking for something that cuts. And also we've got the word colliery. So I think if we start with the word colliery, that's a synonym, same meaning as the word mine. OK. And the clue tells us that the cutter word is set up over the colliery. So the colliery is going to be at the bottom. So we'll put that in the word mine, which means colliery. And then can you guess what to take a look at might be as we've got the last four letters? So a cutter, one word for a cutter you might use in the garden to cut logs is axe. And because it's set up, that means it's put in the wrong way round. So you can see this is a bit of a, a tricky clue. It, it's got lots of different parts that you have to put together, and that's why it's called a, a charade clue. So if we put in axe backwards, we get the word examine. And that's an example of a charade clue. OK, so let's see what letters we've got. What would be another good one to do next? 
So I think we should do 20 down because we already know that it begins with N and it ends with L. And that's going to help us, isn't it? So Christmas wrapping, very new. Okay. So definition, this time the definition is at the end, actually, not the beginning. Uh, a word that means the same as Christmas. So that could be Noel, because we know we've got an N and an L. And then we've got the wrapping and very. And very, the abbreviation for very is V. So we're going to put Noel in. And if we put the V for very in the middle of the word, we get novel. And novel means the same as new. OK, let's try 23 across, because again, we've got some letters towards it. So let me see. We need to go up to the up to the here we go, 23 across. So we've got thoroughly inspect old block. So again, with this one, the, the definition of the answer is at the end of the clue. So this means to block something. Old is usually the abbreviation for old is O. So you might think of Old Testament, for instance, OT. And to thoroughly inspect something. So if you imagine you've got V blank T, that gives you quite a big clue as to what that word might be. So thoroughly inspecting something is to vet. So we'll put the E in. And then we put the O for old at the end and we get veto, which means the same as to block something. OK, I think we should try 11 down now because we've got quite a few letters towards it. So the clue, the nine, it's nine letters long. OK. And definition. So again, it's at the end. It's a brutish fellow. And the rest of the clue is pub to ban chap. So another word for a pub beginning with B is bar. We'll put that in. And bar also means to ban someone. So if, if you're barred from going in the pub, you're banned. So we've got two bars in this answer. And then we've got a chap. Now, a chap means a name of a man. And obviously, you know, there are thousands of names out there. But many of them are quite long, wouldn't fit in the three letters that we've got remaining. And often when it asks for a name, it's going to be a short name. So, and you probably guessed now from what we've got already in the puzzle, uh, that a brutish fellow is a barbarian. So the name that we're looking for is Ian. Okay. So we're getting on really well. So let's have a look at 13. Let me see if I can, um, I'm not sure it's going to let me, um, go back out again. Okay, so sure Ameri American has hidden this tool. This is a, a rather strange clue, actually, or the word is rather strange. Um, oh, this is another hidden hidden clue, actually. Yeah, I've missed this one. So you've got the indicator in the clue. Something's hidden in sure American. 
and the thing that's hidden is actually a tool, but it's an unusual tool that I've not heard of. But it's actually the word Rema, R-E-A-M. Yeah. And you can see that that's the word that's inside Sure American. So we're going really well. You can see that once a clue's been completed, once the answer's put in, uh, the, the clue goes into to pale grey. OK. So let's try this one. Stop to remove cape for comfort, four letters. So we've got an A and an E. So how are we going to tackle this one? So we know that the, the definition is either going to be at the beginning or the end. So it might be comfort or it might be stop. And to remove cape, the abbreviation for cape is a C. So we're looking for a word that means either stop or comfort. And we're going to remove the C from the front of the word. OK, so this is a bit tricky, isn't it? So another word for comfort is ease. OK, and another word for stop is cease. And if you remove the C, the cape, from the beginning of stop, you get ease. Quite a tricky clue that one was. OK. So let's see what's left. Shall we have a go at one across? So again, this is a what we call a charade clue, which means that it's got lots of elements that you have to do one at a time and put them together. So the clue is eight letters considered taking a certain duke after me. OK, so after me suggests that ME is going to be at the beginning of the word. We've already got the E, so let's try putting me in. And then we've got A and a word that means the same as certain. And then an abbreviation for Duke. OK, and the answer will be the same as considered. So we'll put the A in next. We're given the A in the clue. And another word for being certain about something is to be sure. So we've got the S. So we'll put sure in. And then at the end, we're going to have the D for Duke. So that's an abbreviation. And we've got the word measured. OK. We could do six crooks next. Which is stand up to female champion. So female, when it says male or female in a clue, you're often looking for the letter, the first letter, M or F. In this case, F. And another word for champion, if you're really good at a sport, or really good at anything, you're an ace. So we put the F in, followed by ACE. And to stand up to something or someone is to face them. OK, so shall we do some of the down clues as well here? Because we're starting to get quite a lot of letters to help us. And we're doing really well. OK. So father, set of octuplets, a load to be carried. So father is usually shortened to, to FR. It's an abbreviation. And if you've got octuplets in your family, you'd be very unusual. You would have eight children. So we've already got the G. So we can put eight in. EI. Oops, sorry, didn't mean that. I, G, H and T. And the R for father, FR, like a priest, for instance. And then we get 
a word that means something that's carried. So again, a lot of these are charade clues now. Number seven down, best study hard to take in English. So if you study very hard, especially just before an exam, you cram. So we know it's likely to be crammed because we've got the C and the M. OK. And English is E. And that gives us cream. OK. So just see what the, the clue was for that. So that was seven down, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're the cream of the crop, you're the best at something. OK, four down, just three letters. Um, again, this is, is quite a, a tricky one. This is another hidden hidden clue one, actually. Um, so and we know that because we've got the words is core to is core to sacrament. So we're looking for a word that's in the middle of sacrament. And is something to do with a lamb, a lamb's progenitor. That means the father of a lamb. OK, a lot of rather old language in this clue. And if you look hard, you can see you've got the word ram. OK, so nine across, male blushing about girl affected. So do you remember we had the word Ian for a chap, a man? And now we're looking for a girl's name that will fit in the middle of this crossword. Wherever you see the word blushing, that suggests that the word has got red in it. Because when you blush, your face goes red. So I think we could put the red at the end because we've already got the E. OK. And the girl, we just have to guess. So the girl is Anne, because that gives us the word mannered, which means the same as affected. OK. Uh, five down. So this one is threatening fury in party over United States. Nine letters. Now, you see it says over. It's a bit like one of the other clues. Um, I think the one to examine had, had the, the letters or the words over in it. So that suggests that United States is going to be at the bottom because it's a vertical clue. It goes top to bottom. So we've already got an S. So I think we could quite safely put the U in there. And so threatening fury. So if something is threatening, it could be dangerous. Now you might be wondering where the O comes in. And the O, so we've got danger and we've got US, but we need an O in there. So the clue has the word over, which comes from cricket. So the abbreviation in cricket for over is O. And that's how we get dangerous. OK, we're doing really well. So exposed blubber creates a widespread show of disapproval, which is six letters. You might think when you see the word blubber that we're we're talking about whales, but that is not the case. It's a different meaning of the word blubber. So it's the sort of blubber that you might associate with a baby or a young child who's unhappy. OK, so we're looking for the word cry, meaning blubber. OK. And something that is exposed is out in the open. So if we put out in, 
we get outcry and that means a show of disapproval. Lovely. Okay, so let's just move down. I'll have to scroll down on my puzzle. So we're coming to the last few clues. Uh, 14 down is to authorise staff appointment. Okay. I think this is a sort of double definition one, um, really. So an appointment to go out with a with a friend is a date. And then we've got the M at the beginning, haven't we? And staff is points to man. So you, you might say, I've, I've got enough men or I'm fully manned. So it's another word for having some staff to man. Man the shop, maybe. So that gives us mandate. Okay. Let's see what's left. So I think if we do this one, which is 21. I'm sorry, it's a little bit off my screen. Stickler for the law gets all flustered about one. So we've got an A and an I. How are we going to do this one? Okay, so this, this is actually partly an anagram one um, because we've got the, the indicator word flustered which suggests that we need to move the letters from gets and all around. And then we've got about one. So we're going to add an I for one into the middle of that anagram and that will give us legalist. So a legalist is someone who's a stickler for the law. So you see we've had quite a few anagrams haven't we? Maybe five or six altogether. And I think anagrams are always a good place to start. Okay 22 down. So this one's a bit different. Um, exploit tramps regularly. So we, we know it's T something P. It could be top or tip. We've got the word regularly and we've got exploit. So exploit is actually the definition. And then we, what we're asked to do is take the regular letters from the word tramps. So the first, the third, and the fifth letters to make the answer. So that is T followed by A followed by P. And that is tap. And that's the same as exploiting something. You tap it. Okay, so I think we've just got two left. So we've got a five letter word, pressure to spearhead appeal. Okay. So the definition is going to be either pressure or appeal. Uh, we've got an E and a D. Okay. Pressure is often used as an abbreviation. So if you think of um, PSI, pressure per square inch on, your, on the tires on a car, the P stands for pressure. So I think we should put the P in there. And then we need to look for another word that means to spearhead. And this, to spearhead means to lead something. So if we put in lead, L-E-A-D, we then get the word plead, which means the same as to appeal. So we're down to the last one, last but not least. Let's just scroll up. So this one is, is called a reversal clue, actually. Um, and it's where you take a word and you turn it back to front. 
so it's, it's not like an anagram you're just just reversing it um this is the only reversal clue i think in this puzzle so okay <clears throat> so we've got a p and an n the words what we're looking for is a short car trip but the way to get to that word is to find a word that means hurries and turn it back to front, which is why it says hurries back. OK. And if you hurry to the shop, you nip. And if it's someone else hurrying, if your child hurries to the shop or hurries to school, they nips. And if you turn that back to front, you get the word spin, which is a short car trip. There we go. So we get some congratulations. We've um, we've finished a cryptic times quick cryptic puzzle. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed learning a little bit about how cryptic puzzles work. So let's just get back to the main screen. <laughs> so I'll just move this out of the way if it will go. No. So yeah, I really hope that um, that you've enjoyed seeing how to do a puzzle, a cryptic puzzle. Um, sometimes people think, you know, they're very difficult or they have strange sets of, of rules or you need a encyclopedic knowledge of, of different things. Um, but that's that's really not not the case. Um, so you just need to know how to approach them, whether to look for an anagram or a hidden word. And um, like anything else, practice makes perfect. So I hope that you'll feel confident enough to um, to have a go at a at a puzzle from your your favourite newspaper. Okay. So I'm going to stop screen in a minute. So thank you very much for coming along and uh, watching and listening and um, you'll be able to, to see the video on the Facebook page and to if you've got any questions you'll be able to post some comments there. So it's uh, I've really enjoyed working through the puzzle. Um, I've been running a few crossword groups um, over Zoom recently using very similar techniques and um, it's a it's a really good pastime for people especially um, over, over recent months when people have been stuck at home so thank you very much I'm going to say goodbye for now I also need to say thank you for, to the times um, who allowed me to happy with me using their puzzle um, in, in this demonstration and if you're interested there is a, a times and Sunday times um, crossword puzzle club that you can subscribe to. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.